So that's a great segue into my remarks. My name is Betsy Garrell. I live in Knox. I'm the president of the board of directors for a small nonprofit called Food for Maine Future, which advocates for small farmers, farm laborers, and their patrons against corporate food monopolies. Come here today to tell you that the Trans Pacific Partnership trade deal will be very bad for Maine's small farms. Back in the spring, I wrote an op ed for the Bangor Daily News in response to a piece that had been written by someone from the USDA. This person's article represented very well the sentiments of the big agribusiness concerns, and it needed some pushback. This government official stated in her op-ed that rural economies needed trade promotion authority in order to compete on a level playing field when it comes to international trade and the export of US grown food and manufactured goods. As the North American Free Trade Agreement and the Central American Free Trade Agreement and the World Trade Organization have proven, this is far from facts on the ground, unless your idea of a level playing field is one that is dirty, polluted, and economically ravaged. What does the TPP mean for small farmers? We know about the devastation of the manufacturing base in the American Midwest after the above-mentioned trade deals took effect. Companies scurried to move their plants to places with lower standards of living, loose or non-existent environmental protections, and no history of organized labor protecting poorly paid workers. It is, if this is what we want for our small family farms, then all, by all means, let's sign the TPP and the Transatlantic Trade Investment Partnership, both of which, like NAFTA and CAFTA, got our own sovereign court's ability to defend our soil, water, air, and workers from abusive lawsuits brought by multinational corporations. These lawsuits are not decided in a US court of law, as Bonnie was talking about, but by an international tribunal composed of three judges looking only at the trade rules for their decisions. We saw a prime example of this just this week with the WTO's decision in the, in the Cool case, the country of origin labeling for meat. In May 2013 article on food imports, the US Public Citizens Trade Watchdog stated, small scale US family farms have been hardest hit by the import influx caused by deals like NAFTA and the WTO. About 170,000 small US family farms have gone under since NAFTA and the WTO took effect. A 21% decrease in the total number after the WTO required elimination of various US price supports and supply management policies, small farmers were also hard pressed to survive the increasing year to year volatility in prices paid for commodities, making investment and planning more difficult than before the WTO. The National Family Farm Coalition is watching these deals closely and has reported on, on the Obama administration's aggressive push for the fast track authority. I serve on the executive board of this organization. We will be convening from all over the country in DC this coming February to lobby Congress and we hope stop passage of this disastrous trade deal. Small farmers across the country are organizing to tell Congress that what may be good for big agribusiness firms is definitely not good for struggling small family farms. Here in Maine, we are fortunate to have a young, vibrant group of farmers who are working to grow food, rebuild the local food inter infrastructure, and feed the people of Maine. Their livelihood does not depend on exports, but they are subject to the same vagaries that affect small-scale farmers everywhere. If the market becomes flooded with cheap imported food of questionable quality, we may well find it impossible to compete. They may well find it impossible to compete. I can't call myself a young farmer. Um, <laughs> and we'll leave the land, just as countless others have been forced to from I Iowa to Chiapas. Again, from Public Citizen, US corn exports to Mexico in the three years after NAFTA soared 377% above the levels in the three years before the deal. In 2013, the United States exported 26 times as much corn to Mexico as before NAFTA. But when the flood of US corn in Mexico caused corn prices to plummet 66% for Mexican farmers, 2.5 million farmers and agricultural workers in Mexico lost their livelihoods. Many of them resorted to migration. In NAFTA's first seven years, the annual number of people immigrating from Mexico to the United States more than doubled. Talk about unintended consequences. Do we really want to turn our young Maine farmers into economic refugees? This would happen to Maine growers as cheap and questionably organic food floods the market from China and elsewhere. We must protect our family farms and keep, help them grow their businesses to keep the rural economy growing and support all the people who work and live in towns and villages across the state and nation.